Search team arrives on Moors as Keith Bennett's brother believes he will learn today whether his 12-year-old brother's bones have been found to end agony for Ian Brady victim. Human remains have yet to be found in the fresh search for Moore's murders victim Keith Bennett, police said today, extending the anguish of his family, who have been searching for the schoolboy since he was snatched and slain by warped serial killers Myra Hindley and Ian Brady some 58 years ago. Police have been digging on the Moors in the South Pennines in Oldham, near Manchester this week in search of the 12-year-old for the first time in 35 years, after being alerted to suspected human bones by an amateur sleuth. In a statement today, Greater Manchester Police said they have not found anything concrete but insisted the excavation would continue. There were hopes of a breakthrough after bones that appeared similar to those of a 12-year-old child were reported to have been found on Saddleworth Moor on Thursday, just a few hundred yards from where the remains of Hindley and Brady's other young victims were discovered. Between July 1963 and October 1965, the twisted couple killed five children aged between 10 and 17 in a two-year killing spree which shocked the nation. While two of the victims were discovered on the moors in 1965, and a third in 1987, Keith was never found, with the location of his burial site taken to the grave following Hindley and Brady's deaths in 2002 and 2017 respectively. Nazi-obsessed Brady, who was officially diagnosed as a psychopath in 1985, taunted Keith's brother Alan Bennett in a sickening letter in 1991, saying he would leave special instructions of how to find the child's remains in his will, but the clues never materialized. Following this week's findings of new remains, Alan took to social media last night to say that all should be clear and final by some time tomorrow. However he expressed his skepticism, writing on Facebook, apart from believing this is the location for Keith and all the previous graves have been shallow why, if the police were taken to the location, has nothing been discovered as of yet? I cannot escape the feeling that we have been here before. Forensics were pictured erecting two blue tents on Saturday as they resumed digging in a bid to end the six-decade mystery of little Keith's final resting place. How psychopath Ian Brady taunted victim Keith Bennett's brother over the location of the 12-year-old's remains. Ian Brady sent a letter to the brother of Moore's murder victim Keith Bennett saying he would leave special instructions of how to find the child's remains in his will. The taunt from the killer filled Keith's family with hope, but they never received further clues from him. In the letter sent to Keith's brother, Alan Bennett, in 1991, Brady writes, I again advise you to stop searching until matters are resolved. My will contain special instructions for you alone. My time is almost over. Sincerely, Ian Brady. When the contents of the letter were revealed for the first time in 2019, Alan said, it would be another 26 years after he sent that letter before he died. At the time we were hopeful that it might lead to Keith. I wrote to him several times and at one point asked if he would correspond with John Stalker, former assistant chief constable, after he left GMP, so that information could be passed that way. But Brady would change the subject, and nothing came of it. Alan feared it could have been a twisted game Brady was playing, but he also wondered if the special instructions might be in two locked briefcases held by Brady's solicitor. Alan believes they could contain clues as to the exact spot that Brady and Myra Hindley buried Keith, after abducting and killing him in 1964. But Brady's solicitor Robin Markin refused to give the cases to cold case unit officers from GMP. Just before his death in May 2017, Brady requested the two combination locked cases be put in secure storage. It has since emerged officers went to court for a search warrant to open the cases to check them for clues. But a district judge refused the application, stating there was no prospect of an investigation leading to a prosecution as both killers were dead. Keith's brother, Alan, 62, said in 2019, there is a desperate need to look for anything that may help in the recovery of Keith's body and there may be something in those cases. We cannot be sure be we need to know for sure, one way or another. During my correspondence with Brady many years ago he stated that he had left instructions in his will for me alone. He did not give any further detail but it was at a time when I was searching on the moor and asking him about routes taken, areas of the moor, landmarks etc. The refusal by Mr. Markin to help any further is a great cause of distress considering that my brother's body still remains on the moor while all the other victims have been returned to their loved ones for a proper burial.
Alan spent the best part of decade searching Saddleworth Moor himself around Shiny Brook Stream with a team of helpers digging through Pete for Keith's remains. His and Keith's mother, Winnie Johnson, who died in 2012, also visited the moors in a vain search. Reports in early 2022 suggested that Brady's briefcases could be unsealed to detectives if the then Home Secretary Preeti Patel was able to pass a new bill through Parliament. It was hoped the police, crime, sentencing and courts bill would introduce measures allowing detectives to obtain a warrant for material that could reveal the location of a murder victim's remains. Firefighters were also called to the scene to pump the digging site, which has become waterlogged due to the rainy weather. It comes after the Daily Mail exclusively revealed this week that detectives were preparing to exhume a particular area where suspected skeletal remains had been found including what experts believe to be a child's upper jaw with a full set of teeth. Forensic anthropologists from Greater Manchester Police were examining potential samples of body tissue taken from the area in the hope of extracting DNA which could finally crack the infamous murder case. Detectives are also looking at a small sample of material thought to be clothing found buried three foot underground beside the skull. Keith's brother Alan, 66, was said to be a stoic when news about the unexpected twist in the case broke on Thursday. His solicitor John Ainlay said on Friday, I have spoken to my client, Alan Bennett, concerning the reported development in the search for his brother Keith Bennett. My client is keeping an open mind on the latest report having regard to earlier such reports that have raised expectations but not resulted in finding Keith's body. Naturally, the family are hoping that Keith has been found after all these years and their tireless efforts to find closure. I understand Greater Manchester Police are investigating a site of interest but that it will take some weeks to establish whether there is a connection with Keith. The astonishing development comes after author Russell Edwards assembled a team of experts in a bid to solve one of the greatest murder mysteries of all time. Keith Bennett is the only victim of the Moore's murders never to be found after his wicked killers refused to say where he was buried, in a final act of cruelty to his despairing family. The 12-year-old was last seen on June 16, 1964, when he left his family home to stay with his grandmother. Hindley lured the teenager into a van by asking him to help with some boxes, while her sadistic lover Brady sat watching his prey from the back seat. Between July 1963 and October 1965, the infamous serial killers murdered five children before Brady was caught red-handed with the body of their final victim Edward Evans, 17. Extensive searches of the moors led to the discovery of the bodies of Pauline Ridd, 16, John Kilbride, 12 and Leslie and Downey, 10, but Keith's body was never found. Now an author who famously unmasked Jack the Ripper claims to have solved a puzzle that has perplexed police for 58 years. After seven years of painstaking work, Mr. Edwards believes that he has located Keith's grave, which astonishingly is just a few hundred yards from the site where the couple buried their other victims. After extensive soil analysis which indicated the presence of human remains, Mr. Edwards commenced a dig under the supervision of a geologist and expert archaeologist. He discovered a skull which experts believe is that of a child aged around 11, 12 based on the teeth present. Three independent experts have now identified remains at the site as being human. In a sickening twist, Mr. Edwards believes Nazi-obsessed Brady may have been attempting to create the shape of a swastika with the burial sites of his victims. Greater Manchester Police rushed to send a team of officers and forensic experts to Saddleworth Moor on Thursday night just hours after receiving information from Mr. Edwards about his compelling findings. Archaeologist Dawn Keane, who specialises in the study of human remains, remotely supervised the grave cut. She said this week, I do believe there are human remains there. They, police, have got to look. From the photographs, I saw the teeth, I could see the canines, I could see the incisors, I could see the first molar. It is the left side of an upper jaw. There is no way that it is an animal. The renowned expert who has managed high-profile projects including the exhumation of Cardinal Vaughan for Westminster Cathedral, assessed the age of the skull based on the presence of a first molar which usually appears from the age of 11 and there was no secondary molar which usually appears after 12. She also analysed samples from the scene which she said was very likely to be adipose tissue and clothing. Her conclusions were backed by a second archaeologist the male is not naming because of her sensitive work, who said, it is a human skull.
it cannot be anything else. Geologist Leslie Dunlop also carried out soil analysis at the scene which indicated human remains were present. Chemical analysis revealed high levels of calcium and phosphorus which indicates bones were in the soil. There was also nickel present which is usually found in zips and fastenings as well as the clothing dye cobalt, which would suggest that it is not animal remains. The university lecturer said, from my analysis and from my visual impression, I would say that this area has had human remains in it. I cannot think of another other explanation other than it being human remains. Mr. Edwards described the moment he made the discovery, the smell hit me about two foot down. Like a saw, like ammonia. It was on my clothes I stank of it. The soil reeked. I worked as a gravedigger when I was nineteen that hits you, that smell of death. It is distinctive. I was overjoyed. Then we found blue and white stripped material. Then I stopped. I put everything back as I found it. Mr. Edwards believes it can only be Keith, although DNA tests will have to be carried out before this can be confirmed. He added, this is about peace for Keith and closure for the family. Yesterday Keith's brother Alan, 66, who has devoted his life to trying to find his sibling, was informed about the extraordinary discovery. Sources described him as stoic when he was told. GMP Force Review Officer Martin Bottomley said, at around 11.25 a.m. on Thursday 29 September 2022, Greater Manchester Police was contacted by the representative of an author who has been researching the murder of Keith Bennett, a victim of Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Following direct contact with the author, we were informed that he had discovered what he believes are potential human remains in a remote location on the moors and he agreed to meet with officers yesterday afternoon to elaborate on his find and direct us to a site of interest. The site was assessed late last night and, this morning, specialist officers have begun initial exploration activity. We are in the very early stages of assessing the information which has been brought to our attention but have made the decision to act on it in line with a normal response to a report of this kind. It is far too early to be certain whether human remains have been discovered and this is expected to take some time. We have always said that GMP would act on any significant information which may lead to the recovery of Keith and reunite him with his family. As such, we have informed his brother of the potential development, he does not wish to be contacted at this time and asks that his privacy is respected. Senior Investigating Officer Cheryl Hughes said, following information received which indicated that potential human remains had been found on the moors, specialist officers have today, the 1st of October 2022, resumed excavation of a site identified to us. This information included photographs of the site and show what experts working with the informant have interpreted as a human jawbone. No physical evidence of a jawbone or skull has been examined. However, based on the photographs and information provided, and in line with GMP's usual practice to follow up any suggestion of human burial, we began our search of the site of interest. We have not found any identifiable human remains but our work to excavate the site is continuing. Conditions are difficult and it may take us some time to fully complete the excavation but we are committed to ensuring this is undertaken in the most thorough way possible. Keith Bennett's brother Alan, posted on Facebook. I think my final thoughts for the day have to be, what started as a possible fragment of human jawbone became the skull of a 12-year-old, in the press overnight. The forensic team will determine what is there once and for all, no matter how long it takes to excavate the area. Those are the facts so far. In my last contact I was told that nothing at all had been found on the moor and they are about three feet down with the excavation. Apart from believing this is the wrong location for Keith and all the previous graves have been shallow, why, if the police were taken to the location, has nothing been discovered as yet? I cannot escape the feeling that we have been here before but all should be clear and final by some time tomorrow. Just to be clear about this. I'm not saying there is nothing there, what I will say is that I, and many others are confused, to say the very least. I still believe Keith is not in that location and I still believe there were no other victims. However, nobody can rule anything else out. I just cannot understand why nothing has been found. There are two, out of many, occasions that stick out in my memory of finds on the moor. One was found by ourselves when we came across some material with press stud fastener, like those on a casual jacket. 
we immediately contacted the police and the site was investigated the following morning. Unfortunately, somebody informed the press once everybody had returned home to their various locations on the day of the find. It turned out to be nothing related to Keith, it was piece of camping equipment. Then a sheep farmer found some bones, unfortunately he contacted the press before the police, does that ring a bell in this case as well. The police went to the moor and erected a tent before examining the find. It turned out to be sheep bones. I am just getting frustrated, annoyed, confused and feeling a lot more emotions because there is more to this than meets the eye and I cannot understand why that bloke appears not to have been exact in his information to the police about the location. Surely, he cannot have forgotten exactly where it is after his claims about his years of investigations. Just a few of the hundreds of thoughts running through my mind. Instead of doing the rounds of media outlets, maybe that bloke should return to the moor and be a lot more accurate about the facts and location of his find. There's a lot more I would like to say and ask but out of respect and gratitude for the cold case team and the forensic team I'll keep quiet for now.